Something that one's called. That's one of my favourites. I can't see. No, it's that sort of Usually it's the people who collected the piece. We, okay. we, don't, we don't really spend time repinning stuff unless it's in very bad condition. It seems like on years that are generally um, hotter and a bit wetter, we found that the wings um, are more different on the same bee. So this kind of could be an indicator that bees uh, maybe had a bit more stress in those years that were hotter and wetter. Hard points, and you, then I would often use tweezers. Okay, yeah. And you know, really small specimens. <laughs> Um, it's much easier than holding them with tweezers. Cause, oh, uh, is it like a uh, I don't know, We have to be careful not to extrapolate too much because, of course, there could have been other things that were contributing to this difference in shape. Um, but given climate change and given that we're predicted to have a lot more hot weather, I think we, we could be a bit worried about how bees are doing in the future. an exoskeleton so you can put a, a pin through a bee and if nothing much changes it will sit there happily in the same state for, for hundreds of years. Uh, sometimes you might want to arrange the specimen when you uh, are setting it so that the wings are nicely outstretched which, which helped a lot with this particular research study um, but a lot of the time they're just pinned and put in the collection and that's that. So we've got the things to know. So what have you found? Yeah, I thought like that, that, that must have been yeah. used. I'm sure it was, yeah. yeah. That was only the first one to quarter. Probably. It shouldn't. It might be a subtle effect, but yeah, I'd, I'd be amazed if there was a real effect there. Yeah. You yeah. can see, where's the tongue one? With this one here? This yeah. one here. So previously, we could extract some DNA from those bees, but those kind of methods only extracted very, very small fragments and only partial parts of the genome. But these new techniques can really, we're looking at basically extracting at least 40, 50% of that genome. That provides a, a kind of bigger picture because there's lots of what we call markers across the genome that we can use to understand whether diversity has changed or not. This is essentially sort of an irreplaceable time machine, uh, a time capsule. You know, these specimens were collected at a certain point in time, and there's no other record of, of bees that were flying around, you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. These, these, uh, these data are absolute, uh, in museum collections and pretty much nowhere else. The buzz in Maine this summer. So something has shifted since the mid-1990s that is causing this species abundance shift. The primary reasons for that, habitat loss, pesticides, and diseases. 